Hi, I'm Bob Batcher, Executive Director for Prime Plus Senior Centers, and this is Prime Time with Bob. And I'm with a guy in a pumpkin suit. What can I say? Micah Hunt with Garrett Realty. How you doing? I'm great, Bob. It's always good to, to see you. See you. That's the terminology now. Screen to screen. Yeah. <laughs> and, and normally when I'm here, I'm kind of right next to you on the box, and then there's 16 other people. But you have been in that office for six months. Have you ever left the office? I, I will be honest. I have left and I have moved, <laughs> just not as frequently as I would have liked when we weren't in COVID. <laughs> I, I know. I want to talk to you, kind of do it. I'm, actually, I'm checking in with you because you were one of my first prime time with Bob uh, interviews, believe it or not, back in March when we first started doing these. Um, Seems long time ago. I know it. And we were thinking, okay, a couple of weeks, we'll be back to normal, right? That's what everybody was saying. It's going to yeah. go away. I hate to say this, Micah, but I think we're in normal. What do you think? This is the next normal. We've, we've heard new normal for probably ever since COVID hit us. This is yeah. the next normal. This is the and, next normal. And I don't want to hear pivot either. Uh, a, <laughs> okay, let's go back. Pre-March 12th, what was your life like? Busy. Um, it's, I, but I feel like that's a new term too now. Um, there's a different busy. But um, I was... You know, Bob, I was I was visiting um, ten different families a month. You know, helping them coordinate the process of downsizing, um, and then probably average, you know, three to four closings a month um, before COVID. Um, visiting people face to face, not having to worry about masks and social distancing, not any of that. Um, going to events, going to conferences, functions, anything senior related, going to. Your kids were in a school building. I mean, our kids were in a school building. They were going to preschool. The wifey was happy and, you know, not <laughs> not juggling everything and teacher and everything. And then COVID, our, our bane of, of a word, COVID hit. <laughs> so job-wise, your goal for the day was to accomplish what pre-COVID? Pre-COVID was to um, help families move into retirement community, um, you know, faster. You know, not faster, but quicker if they, you know, if they needed to move in quicker, then I would help them move in quicker. If they wanted to take their time, we'd move according to their pace. But we just, it was a, a, a help. We would help facilitate, take the stresses off of them. Like at, moving at any stage of life is not fun or pleasant or easy at any right. stage. But when it's your probably your last move out of the house you've been in for 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 years with over 100 years of memories, um, it's the hardest move. And so what I did is I would help coordinate and facilitate the process of figuring out what goes, what doesn't, what fits, what doesn't. Do we need cleaners? Do we need movers? And then I would navigate that process for free, you know, and, and do all that. That's cool. Um, post -COVID. And, and you had some absolutes. I mean, you could come yeah. home. Yeah. And help the kids with homework and say, this is what I accomplished. Because that's how we, we looked at it. That's that. how we looked at it. Now, I know you as an, a stellar um, facilitator on, on Zoom meetings. You're bringing people together. You're delivering uh, in suits like that one, delivering stuff with uh, nursing homes and whatever. So you're maintaining those relationships, but you're doing them differently. Why is that? Well, um, as, as you know, and as many of our viewers probably have seen, you know, retirement communities and nursing homes, anything healthcare, well, yeah, anything healthcare really, it's restricted to let visitors in. Even somebody in a pumpkin suit <laughs> is limited to go in, you know? So it's, you know, a lot of them are, are doing what we call now parking lot visits or, you know, drive-by visits now. So, and that's no fun, you know, and you're not, and you're only able to spend two minutes to talk, you know, because they're having to be pulled in, They'd have to get their temperature checked. I'd have to get my temperature checked every time. And we're only limited a very few. So I had to kind of come up with unique ways and innovative ways to stay connected in a group setting, virtually, screen to screen, as many of us like to, to, uh, to, uh, to call it the Brady Bunch screen. Who right. would have known that that would be the normal? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, having to develop that and keep people connected to hearing who's struggling at the time COVID started, who needed toilet paper? <laughs> right. And we find a way to get the toilet paper to them. Um, so that's what we've had to do. And it's just been trying to be creative and innovative. 
Well, I think I share with you, you know, um, I have one of your networking meetings to thank for kind of moving forward because I was, again, used to driving out to Virginia Beach for a task force meeting or going someplace in Norfolk for a task force meeting. And now it was by the click of a finger and I was like, I'm done with this stuff, this technology. <laughs> and after sitting back and talking to peers from the industry, I remember uh, uh, texting my daughter, who's a performer, say, I'm doing a Facebook Live by 3.30 if you don't, if you don't Call me, I'll make a fool of myself. And I've been doing that ever since, making a fool of myself. Yeah. But, but it's a matter of really looking at a new way of doing the normal. Do what you normally do, but do it differently. Okay, yep. let's talk realistically now. The 85-year-old who's been living independent, who owns a home, and I know you don't sell houses, and that's somebody else's business, but has those memories has stuff galore, and houses in her neighborhood are selling in 24 hours or less. Right? You're right, yeah. I mean, and she's sitting there. Mm -hmm. What do you tell her? Uh, that is the million dollar question, Bob. So, you know, it, for me, what I, what I tell families um, that are in that situation is I try to find out what is keeping them at home. You know, if, if they have family that's visiting them frequently, they're local and the kids are visiting, they're taking care of them, you know, they're, you know, bringing them food, they're going out on, on uh, you know, to their house and visiting back and forth and they're really having a good time. You know, I, I kind of go, okay, well maybe, you know, senior living may not be the right option right now. You know, if you have family visiting because there are still quite a few communities in our area, especially Bob, that aren't allowing visitors yet. Um, or if they are, you know, it's very limited. It's only two days a week for half an hour. Um, and then there are still some communities on the, on the other side that if you leave any time for a doctor's appointment or anything, if you leave the community, when you come back, you're on two weeks quarantine. So, and as you know, there are a lot of, you know, the elderly that have doctor's appointments sometimes every day, every other day. And so if they go to that community, they're, they're basically quarantined for the remainder of their days until mm -hmm. COVID or whatever restrictions get lifted. They're, they're there. They could have a potential of not seeing their kids for two years. You know, I mean, we, that's just a guesstimate. Don't quote me anybody on that. Right. But, you know, we don't know how long well, there's it's fear be. of that. There's fear of that. There's fear of that. So if somebody has their kids local, if they are, and they're independent, if they're, if they're, completely independent. They maybe are on the first floor. They don't have any second story bedrooms or anything like that. And they're able to manage getting in. And I will be honest, I may look in a fridge and see how old the milk is or how old the food is um, and kind of gauge where are they mentally, physically, where are they? Are they still driving? Do they have dings on the corners of their car? Because when they get out right. or pull in, you know, are they dinging it? So, but then on the other side, if I talk to them and they don't have family local, you know, their friends are here. They have friends, but not family. They have friends visiting, but it's not all the time. And they're starting to feel like they're getting anxious, not being able to go out. They're, they're getting a little fearful. They're the ones that I definitely would highly recommend that maybe it's time to make a change into a retirement community. So what, what, are, go ahead. Yeah, what are things that they should be evaluating besides fear of change what, what, um I, mean, I think the biggest i think the biggest fear now is not just change it's also fear of covid like am i going to get it um you know what what things should i be worried about i, I wash my hands i wear the mask um, i keep distanced so i think one of the other fears is um just going into a senior living community you know and and are am i going to be next to somebody that might have be vulnerable you know have had covid or are they you know, being, you know, uh, aware that there's, there was COVID there or not. So I think it's not just the fear of change, but now it's the fear of the um, unknown of what's going to happen when I make this move. Because, and I will tell everybody, you know, moving now pr to current COVID and, you know, maybe, maybe it's post COVID. I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. But, you know, pre COVID, nobody worried about how many people are going to come in in the house. You know, you have movers, you have cleaners, you have realtors, you have, you know, contractors if need be, landscape, you have all these people. That wasn't a big deal. But now 
during COVID, you don't know who these other people are coming in. And now you have other movers coming in. You have all these people coming in. And now there's that fear of, okay, well, they're touching things. Do I have to wash that? Do I, do I like, how do I separate myself from all the people that are going to be coming in and out of the house? Okay. So, so I think that's. So Mike, okay. Take me. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I got a big yard. I'm tired of mowing it. I'm, I, I'm hearing about my neighbor's house selling in, in, uh, in one day. And I'm thinking, man, maybe I ought to just put a sign up and, and move into one of those places where we will take care of me. I'm, at the, I'm of the age. So what I'm hearing from you is maybe I shouldn't be as enthusiastic about moving as I think I should be at this time. Well, you know, if, if, you're, if you're getting tired of the yard, if you're getting tired of things, if those things are becoming a hassle, then maybe it is time to make a move. You know, I, I want to be, you know, maybe I'm not clear enough, but let me try to break it out a little bit. So for you, Bob, you're empty nested. Yeah. All your kids are gone. It's just you, your wife. It is wonderful. And I'm sure it's wonderful. <laughs> However, I don't know if you're really ready to make a step into that. You know, I don't know if, if you really have, are you done traveling? You know, your kids are gone. Do you want to travel? Even if it's COVID, ticket prices are way cheaper now than they were. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm you hearing know? you say is it's good to have a conversation about it. It is. One of the first 100%. things you said to me a few minutes ago was, family. This is a good, it's not a matter of sitting down and making an announcement, I'm moving next week, but to really talk about what are your human needs. Yeah. And it's not really about COVID. It's really your human needs in today's environment. Am I hearing you right? Yes, because isolation is probably the biggest, Ooh. I mean, isolation, we all know, you know, it, those of us in senior living and healthcare, isolation has been the has been a problem for, for a long time, yeah. for a long time. But COVID has escalated that to a whole new avenue um, and to a whole new level as well. So if you don't have family visiting on a regular basis or, you know, and, and having people checking on you and you're starting to feel like the yard's becoming an issue, going up and down the stairs because your bedroom's on the second floor, um, you know, you're having challenges, going to the grocery store because you're fearful, it's time to have a conversation. You know, not necessarily like put the me. house in the market, but have a conversation. Have a conversation because maybe it's time, you know, to have a discussion about moving into somewhere where food's provided for you. They'll bring it to your door. You don't have to worry about landscaping. Everything's on the first floor or an elevator. So your your needs are there. But again, like like you alluded to, and I'm very I'm I'm very correct in this, family is a is a defining factor. If you have family visiting, you know, every day and, and following up with you, do you want to potentially lose that? It's, it's, it's okay to have visitors. I mean, yes, if your family's not visiting every day and there's limitations and so forth, and you're still struggling with yard and everything else, and you're okay with a, you know, a six foot distance, a big screen in front of you visiting that way, um, then maybe that's the right way to go. Um, but, you know, every person's different and every situation is different. Yeah. And, Unfortunately, an hour, 10 to 15 minute conversation, I'm not going to be the expert and give you every analogy and every source that's there. Some people really need the move in. Um, I do have, you know, and I know you and I were talking about this previously, but give you a case in point. Pre-COVID, I would probably have 10 families, like I said, that I'd work with every month and probably about three to four closings a month. Okay. During COVID, since March, since March, I've had four closings. Wow. Okay, so that kind of gives you perspective of, I, I primarily, for those that don't, didn't see us um, last in March, I primarily focus on seniors. I don't, I don't work with right. my age group, younger, you know, millennials, 40s, 50s. I work with seniors and elders. Because you really, so that, we're out of time, but you really okay. have to look. Yeah, can you believe it? You really have to look at uh, the reality of your choices that you're making, include your family, get you involved to help facilitate that process. Micah, thanks for everything that you've done to pre keep the senior world together, not just the seniors, but the people that are working within that industry. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. It's people like you that I keep doing it. Yeah, there we go. And <laughs> you mow yards? No. <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot. And remember, stay, stay safe, but stay connected. Thanks.